Hey guys, I wanted to uh, explain another feature, another method of JavaScript lists that uh, turns out to be super valuable, super uh, useful. And that's the reduce method or the reduce function. So uh, reduce, you know, so far we've talked about map, we've talked about filter, um, we even did for each. So uh, reduce is another method of a of a list so you can you could say something of my list dot reduce and it uh it would apply the reduce it would it applies a function to every element of a list it's a little bit like math in that way <clears throat> but it has an additional concept which is that you're going to take the result of the previous function call and add that as another argument to the function for the next function call so it means you can take you can apply a function to the first element of the list, and then the result of that can then be combined with the result from the next element of the list, and that can be combined with the result from the next element of the list, and so on. So a simple example is if you wanted to add all the numbers together. So let's say I have a list of numbers here. I want to calculate the sum of the numbers. I don't want to write a loop. So reduce is a perfect, example, a perfect use case for that. You pass in a, an anonymous function with two arguments. And the arguments, <clears throat> so here we go. Well, darn, it was just showing. There they are. Um, oh, it's complaining. So uh, I need to say, there we go. It has, it, the first argument is the previous value. The next argument is the current value. Then it also gives you the index and it gives you the whole array. We're not, we don't really need the index for most of these examples, although there may be a time when you did need the index. And you don't really need the whole array, but there might be a time when you'd like the whole array. So if you if you want to supply four arguments, you can get the previous value, the current value, the index of the current value, and the whole array that you're iterating through. So, and there's a little secret is that you can actually, you're allowed to modify the array in place if you if you want to live dangerously, but that's, uh, that, that's a whole nother can of worms. So let's just worry about the first two arguments, the previous value and the current value. So the previous value is the result of the function call on the previous element. So if I'm calculating a sum, the previous value would be the previous sum. So you could say um, S for sum, C for current value. So let's uh, sum value, say, and then cur value. Just give them decent names so we can. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to return the sum, uh, the sum value plus the current value, right? And then I want to start with zero. So what you do is, um, let's see if it's going to show me here again. Oh, darn it. I don't know. I don't know how it decides when it shows me the documentation. There we go. So it's the callback function, and then it's the initial value. The initial value is the thing that you pass in after that function. So it means I'm going to start the sum at zero, and then we're going to add up the running total sum plus the current value. And this is a list of numbers. So if I were to console log this out and run it, I should get the sum of one, two, three, four, five. That should be 15, right? Boom, and I got 15. Now I could also multiply them together. So I could do star the current value, but then if I start with the current value of zero, I'm gonna get zero, that's no good. If I'm gonna multiply them, I better initialize the thing with one, and then I'll get the product. So it's 120. Does that sound right? One times two times three is six, times four is 12. No, wait, six times four. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24 times 5 is, is that 120? No, wait. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24 times 5 is 120. It is indeed. 100. Okay, I just can't do math, that's all. So yeah, that works. Um, so that's reduce. But you know, you can do even, you can do more interesting things with reduce than just math. So you can just add, then just add numbers and multiply numbers. I could also um, 
do something with a list of objects. So suppose I wanted to calculate the sum of the IDs, or, or uh, I want to accumulate a list of IDs, but only if the IDs are even. Does that make sense? So you could do something like that. Um, let's, let's calculate the sum of the even IDs, just for fun. Okay, so instead of my list, I'm going to do my users. So my users, of course, is not a list of numbers. It's a list of user objects. So now current value is going to be a user object. And initial value, um, it needs to be a list of users. So or uh, it, uh, it, if it's going to be a sum, it should be, I should start it with zero. So sum, this is going to be the sum so far. This is going to be the current user. So instead of adding, I can't add curve value because it's now a user object, right? Um, so what if I just added uh, curve value dot ID? That's going to be the sum of all the IDs now, right? Curve value, let's change it from curve value to curve user because now we know it's, because I'm iterating now over a list of users, I should call this curve user. It's, a, it's the current user. And then let's run. And it's, uh, wait a minute, some value. Oh, and multiplying, I need to add. Okay. 19, is that right? 12 plus 2 is 14 plus 5 is 19. Yep. So it added the IDs of all the user. It took the current user ID and added it to the running total. The running total starts at 0, so that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> What if I only want to add the current ID if it's even? So for that, there's a couple of ways I could do it. One uh, simple but kind of crude way would be to say, well, if the cur user dot ID uh, percent two equals 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 zero, that means it's even. Then uh, I want to return the current value uh, plus the cur user dot id. Otherwise, I just want to return the current value. I'm not going to add anything to it. Okay, that would work. Uh, why doesn't it like this? Oh, I also have to put in a zero. That's the initial sum. It was confused about the type of the s value. And why is that? Aha, uh -huh. got to close the console log. Okay, let's run that. I get 14. So notice 12 plus 2 is 14. 5 is odd, so it fails this test and it doesn't get added. So that is doing what I wanted. I, I have a, a sum that only sums the even IDs, right? That makes sense. Um, but I could spell this a little bit more succinctly by instead of putting all that junk in there, I could just say cur user dot ID percent two equals 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 zero question mark. If that's true, then I return s value plus cur user dot ID. Otherwise, I return s value. And then uh, that's my whole function. And that way, I don't even need, uh, I don't need any braces. And it saves me some space, and I get the same answer. Okay, so this is called a ternary expression. I put a Boolean, then a question mark, then the result of the expression when the, when the Boolean is true, then the result of the expression when the Boolean is false. This is the same ternary that's used by C and C++, so you're probably familiar with it already. But that's the way that one works. Um, but you don't even have to necessarily uh, use arithmetic. What if I wanted to uh, make a list of items, the list of IDs, but only the even IDs? So what I could do is start with an empty list. Uh, I need to cast it to uh, a user array because an empty list without saying as user array is just an empty list of nothing. It's an undefined type. So this 
This is a way of casting it to tell TypeScript that it's an array of users. Um, and then instead of, so when the ID is even, I want to append it to the list. So, uh, but I need to write that as an expression. So the easiest way to do that is to say dot 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 s value. That's the current list of values as a list now. And then I'm going to add on the per user dot ID. So I have a list. Um, it's actually not a list. It's a number. Sorry. It's an array of numbers, not an array of users. So let's make this a little more clear. I'm going to make this function. It's going to return uh, the old list plus the current ID if the current ID is even. Otherwise, it's just going to return the old list. And let's run that. Boom. And I get 12 too. So that means it's only the even ones. If I if I made this percent two equals 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 one, that will only give the odd ones. So that just gives me five. So you see how that works. The point is reduce is amazing. Reduce can do uh, all kinds of different shenanigans as you iterate through a list, as long as you're com computing something along the way or, or generating a result along the way. It turns out you can actually implement map, you can implement for each, and you can implement filter. All three just with reduce. So reduce is all you really need. Um, it, it actually can do everything. And that's what we're going to be doing in class tomorrow. I'll make a challenge for you guys to implement all those other things, map, filter, and for each, using just reduce. And then after you're done with that exercise, you'll have reduce under control, I feel. All right, very good. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <clears throat>